The New York Times has reported that Israeli officials apparently obtained a sort of draft, well-developed version of Hamas's battle plans for the October 7th terrorist attack more than a year before it happened, according to documents, emails, and interviews with officials and analysts. Um, apparently, Israeli military and intelligence officials dismissed the plan, saying that it was aspirational, fantastical. It's not something they could actually do, although uh, analysts at the time were saying, no, we think that there is a chance for this. And as Hamas continued to run sort of like training simulations, analysts would point to that as saying, this is in line with that plan that we talked about, something should be done. But obviously nothing was done and we had one of the most horrific uh, incidents on October 7th that anyone can remember. It was apparently a 40 page document. Uh, it's been codenamed Jericho Wall by Israeli authorities. And um, much of what it described was a part of October 7th. It had a barrage of rockets at the outset of the attack, partially to open up um, you know, ways to penetrate barriers, also as a distraction, uh, drones knocking out security cameras and automated machine guns. And then a combination of foot assault, motorcycles, paragliders, all of these things were in the Jericho Wall document. All of these things happened on January or on October 7th. The plan also talked about what the objective of it would be hostage taking, occupying communities, maybe even multiple communities. And at the time, more than a year ago, the Jericho Wall document was apparently circulated widely among Israeli military and intelligence experts, um, but they did not believe that it could be done. Uh, however, in July, this is just this July, just three months before the attacks are actually done, a veteran analyst with Unit uh, 8200, Israel's Signals Intelligence Agency, warned that Hamas had conducted an intense day long training exercise that appeared similar to what was being outlined in the blueprint. But a colonel in the Gaza division brushed off her concerns, according to emails. And the uh, analyst said, I utterly refute that the scenario is, ima uh, is imaginary. Uh, the Hamas training exercise fully matched, quote, the content of Jericho Wall. It is a plan designed to start a war. It's not just a raid on a village. And apparently was told we're just going to be patient. And obviously we know, you know, the horrific consequences of nothing being done in that case. Brett, this is dramatic reporting. What do you make of this? It's like I. This is this is a report. And everybody should read it and understand it. And but my favorite are like the takes afterward. Like there's a lot of people's what? takes that are like, yo, we should like the same people like don't believe Israeli intelligence or like, you know, we should have believed they should have believed Israeli intelligence. Israeli intelligence knows a lot of stuff. Um, what's the counter argument is should they have done a preemptive attack? Then it just feeds into a narrative. Uh, but I do believe that. Benjamin Netanyahu has been so focused on like horrendous occupation of the West Bank that he just, you know, the the narrative that this reinforces is that he just didn't really care enough. I uh, thought he was winning so hard in Gaza that he didn't really mm. think it was that well, big a deal. Like, well, hold on for one second, just to be fair. According to the reporting, there's no there's no indication or confirmation that Benjamin Netanyahu was aware of the Jericho Wall document. That's why I say it feeds into the narrative. Like, buck stops with him, you know. That and and his intelligence apparatus didn't, you know, raise it to his level, and he's in charge of staffing all of that essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, you I know, would say the the administration, the, his sure. government, as it's called there. Just to respond to your, your thing about the Israeli intelligence, though, I, I would just respond that I think that you can have a view about the public statements of an intelligence agency that doesn't necessarily have to be in line with what you believe that country's military should prepare based on it. Like the CIA should inform our military of things. That doesn't mean I believe everything the CIA says publicly because that then becomes an avenue for propaganda. Yeah, that makes sense. It's uh, but like that's not the takes I've seen that are they're not that sophisticated. They're they're just mm -hmm. like, it's like the other thing. Like people are taking the report that there were uh, deaths at, on October seventh, where the Israeli military killed its own people, and the takes after that are like, Hamas is innocent because uh -huh. it it turns that's it, folks. End of story. The Israeli military killed every you know killed its mm -hmm. own people on that day. Ignore it, everything. Um, yeah. I just, I, it's yeah. like that. It's that thing. Is I and and for me, it's like I've given my my official take. I just gave part of it with Netanyahu horrendous uh, uh, occupations and settlers in the West Bank is just the worst. Um, and 
and I called for a ceasefire at like days at you know like in support of the ceasefire days after uh, the attack uh, when it when the proportions had been kind of commensurate with what uh, typically happens in these situations uh, given history and mm-hmm. uh, but but for this it's just. I I want I don't I don't like the takes that are like you know when Hamas releases a, a terror uh, when uh, Hamas hostage. releases a hostage people are like look they hugged afterwards Hamas is great mm-hmm. like that's kind of crazy <laughs> yes. those are the takes that are just like what are we doing so keep it keep it connected this is one of those things this is the reason why so many people in Israel are like listen there there are many people who don't approve of Benjamin Netanyahu more now than ever. Don't yeah. support Netanyahu in Israel. There are two essential groups in that opposition to him. One grew as a result of it, but both of them are pretty upset with the fact that he couldn't keep them safe. And uh, there's two different people in that coalition that doesn't that thinks we should do different things, you know, to keep him keep them safe. You know, in their minds, um, one is yeah. to work toward a uh, peaceful solution, which is the one I endorse. And the other is the people that are like, just go get rid of Gaza, which is something that is ter- terrible and counterproductive yeah, and 100%. bad and evil. By the way, uh, as we've previously alluded to on how much actual support there is now and historically for the leadership of Hamas or Benjamin Netanyahu's government, uh, John Oliver did a great breakdown of that several weeks ago. Everyone should definitely check it out. Uh, yes, if it's not already clear, uh, nothing about this reporting means that Hamas is innocent for what they did from my point of view. That seems crazy. Um, and it's also like when this sort of thing comes out, some of these quotes seem really damning. It is hard to know for sure. How many equivalents of the Jericho Wall document are there? I don't yeah, know. I like, was, was this the one big thing that was ignored, or there are a thousand? Like, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an Israeli intelligence officer, despite what some conspiracy theories might say. And so, it feels like Bin Laden determined to strike in the United States. That's what it feels like. It feels like George W. Bush ignoring a document, but it's so hard to say. You know how how much more attention should there have been paid to it? Obviously, the stakes were incredibly high. So many people died as a result of this. Um, but anyway, that that this is something that obviously inside of Israel they're going to want to do a lot of investigation into. I would imagine. Yeah, and I don't okay. think that most people have the those those like terrible takes that I said. It's just like I see them all the time. Sure. And if you're if you see those and you're like, oh, that makes sense. It just, it doesn't, it's counterproductive. It doesn't help your own argument. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.